part of the reason why I'm having you on here, Ben Cohen of the Wall Street Journal, and, and discussing what we are discussing. And as you say, it's kind of crazy that we're talking about communist uh, you know, papers and things like that on, on a sports show, if you will, is that this could cost the job of uh, a, an executive of the year who puts together Harden and Westbrook uh, for uh, an organization that could win the NBA championship right now who just bestowed upon him, because of how terrific he is at his job, a long-term contract because a tweet got blown up by a whole bunch of bots because he strolled into a geopolitical story that is so monumental it involves the president of the United States, President Xi, uh, LeBron James, Adam Silver, Nike, I mean, Warner Brothers movies. I mean, it, it is insane how many parts of our world this touches, Ben. And don't forget, like, all of this happening against uh, uh, trade negotiations and a tariff war that could disrupt the global economy. You're totally right. It is, um, it, it, it's absurd that um, it has come to this, but I do think it's, I mean, I, I struggle to think of a more consequential story for the NBA in a very long time. And um, in terms of, like, geopolitical implications, in terms of um, the tension that existed here for a while, in terms of the magnitude of the crisis, I mean, it's, it's one of the most consequential and and you know, also the most bizarre episodes, I, I think maybe even in the history of American professional sports. I mean, I, I don't know how you really top this. So what's the more what, what's uh, what happens next here with uh, with Maury and the NBA? Based on uh, all, all that you've gleaned on what uh, obviously the NBA will read your article with your colleagues and try and put it all together uh, with a tip off coming next Tuesday. What do you think happens, Ben Cohen? Yeah, it's amazing that the tip-off is already next Tuesday. But um, I, I, I do think that um, the height of the conflict has passed, right? I mean, I think the worst is over for the league, and both sides seem to have retreated from the brink a little bit. Um, and, and kind of the, US, uh, the NBA has gone back to the U.S. Um, China appears to have, um, you know, told its state institutions to uh, – uh, you know, stop going after the NBA. The LeBron thing this week uh, uh, brought it up again a little bit, but I think basketball will start and people will sort of forget about it. But there are huge consequences for the league that I think the league is still beginning to wrap its head around this crisis. And a lot of it is in uh, China's hands. I mean, it depends how far they're willing to take this. The Rockets still have not been restored to uh, to China Chinese television or uh, any other streaming networks. And, you know, I, I, I think it's... Um, um, it's sort of crazy to say, but you know, we don't know what the fallout of this will be for a very long time. I mean, I think the league is still trying to figure out what it all means, and uh, I mean, there are implications for the salary cap, for example, that have been discussed. If 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 revenue from China, which you know, until last week was the league's most important foreign market, so this, th there's so much uncertainty right now, and I think. The league seems to be pleased that it um, it weathered the storm while they were there, and now they just have to figure out what comes next. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.